All right. Well, I'm Ariel, um, and this is Nadia, and um, we're from Hillsborough Community College in Tampa, um, and we're both from different campuses. I'm from Ybor City, which is um, a, a really interesting historic arts entertainment district, and Nadia's from Brandon, which is a suburb of Tampa. <laughs> Just a suburb. <laughs> um, our campuses are about the same in, in full-time enrollment, or term enrollment, so uh, but totally different demographics. <laughs> And um, so what we wanted to share today um, is um, how we used um, training um, as an opportunity to um, have a conversation about consistency. We're from a five campus um, college. Um, and we kind of identified um, a way to uh, have a conversation, um, trying to wrangle all those different moving parts. And so we, we wanted to bring and share with you um, the materials that we developed, and we thought we could also share strategies um, for having productive conversations. Um, and then what we did is we borrowed a kind of a project management approach um, because it was just getting too crazy. Yes. Um, so we needed a, yeah. we needed to a system to facilitate our conversation and our planning and our assessment. So we, we created a, a model that we will, are going to implement on many future projects. And so we wanted to share that with you and then also maybe talk more about training programs if that was your interest as well. Um, yeah, so we introduced ourselves. We're both, um, I'm an ASC coordinator and so we're um, kind of an all-in-one. We have a rating center, a math lab, um, subject area, tutoring, and um, Nadia is a support services manager because she has a few other uh, labs under her. Um, but basically, we sort of call each other just the counterparts. So when I go to Brandon, I say, I'm the Nadia of Ybor. I go to Ybor, oh, okay. and I'm the, I'm the Ariel of Brandon. So we work that well. Um, but we really want to tell about you and what you wanted to get from this session. So your name, your institution, your role, responsibilities. But really, what about the description got your attention? Because we're going to try to be as flexible as possible and give you the most of what you came for. Because um, we can take it a couple different ways. graduate assistant. So my roles and responsibilities kind of are flexible. Um, I do anything between reading, learning, tutoring to more administrative tasks, proposals, grants. I'm the catch-all. Okay. I really am. Um, I... So you do just lots of different to projects. projects. Other duties yes. as assigned? Yeah. I'm sorry? Other duties as assigned? Um, I mean, that's, that's where you spend a lot of the catch-all. You sort of do it all. Okay. Okay. Whatever is like, oh, can you do it? Yeah. Do you tutor students? I do. In reading and writing? For study skills and also content area literacy. So a lot of the times students will have issues with biology classes, chemistry classes, and the underlying real issue is reading comprehension. So we do a lot of extra credit workshops, writing workshops, lab workshops. Um, so I started first as a tutor and then now that I'm working on my master's and switched over to the GA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you interested in kind of the training component? Like, um, I... I <laughs> like, I don't know why. I'm, I'm in the wrong room. room. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I like that you guys had the whole we um, encouraged the philosophical, pedagogical, practical oh. questions that navigate. So that ending, I was like, okay, that sounds good. Okay. But um, I have this whole one, one FIE person per room. So my friend is right next door. I was like, no, I don't want to harming got much work, some kind of student affairs and like going next door. So I'm here. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Robin Coulter and I'm the learning specialist at the Palm Beach State College Lake Worth campus. And what intrigued me was um, consistency in tutor training. Just the idea of what that means, what what you were going to discuss in that. Okay regard, um, but how do you, you know, I don't know, just the, the question about how to train a tutor. Okay. Um, That's a good question. People do, <laughs> people do this differently, like we have the okay. CRLA uh -huh. certified, and that's excellent, right. you know, level one, level two, level three, and what else do we need to do on an ongoing basis to make sure all our tutors are basically across the board, there's some consistency there, in delivery. 
And your not necessarily style, but the delivery of okay. So as uh, uh, so if you have multiple sites, are you as an institution training, or each site is training towards CRLA? Oh no, and I meant I work in the writing center, mm -hmm. and um, we see we have a very high volume. Yes. And we also have over 20 students, um, 20 tutors, mm -hmm. and on any given yeah. schedule, there are 10 to 12 tutors. So my my the interest was here is what what is it that you're talking about when you're talking about tutor training as a vehicle consistency. Oh, I didn't know what you were going, I just thought it was interesting. Okay. And we know you're here because you're a monitor. Yeah, but that's not people do. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Are you the monitor? Yeah. <laughs> My monitor. But she's interested in moderating this. Yes, <laughs> even better. I'm Carol Lassen from FAU. I'm actually the director of the learning community program, um, so I'm not necessarily Learning community. Oh, really? Um, not necessarily. Uh, my office is. Com my job is in with the academic support of science tutoring, but it's totally separate program. But I thought I wanted to be um, involved in the conference planning. Um, so I did ten other other sessions. But what interests me is that I'm involved. I lead a peer mentor program, and I'm always looking for ideas of training because they're they're volunteers. So it's any type of training and information I can get that's different from what I currently do is informational and pretty useful. And you are a fantastic tour <laughs> cruise director yes. Thank yesterday. Yes. Thank you Thank for you. making sure we were all on the well, bus. Are you in the blue box? I hear yep. a lot about yeah. tutor training specifics, but also we have a program management. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we wanted to give you a little bit of context about why we chose this as our project. And you had asked, um, like, what do you mean training as part of a consistency conversation? Yeah. Um, so as we said, we're five campuses, and we have, um, it's sort of a joke, we have our, in 2012, 2013, our theme yes. was one college. And it was immediately, it had many versions as, as jokes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it would be like one-ish, what? Um, one adjacent, <laughs> one adjacent. Um, but for when when I started and when you started, we both started within six months of each mm -hmm. other. The goal was one college, um, and so we embraced it immediately. And we still do, and we still do, um, because historically, um, all the colleges were run more like individual. Or all the all the campuses were run like individual colleges. Um, mm -hmm. um, so what has developed are you know things that have absolutely no no consistency yeah. um, really to the to the detriment of students so um, courses aren't aligned um, services aren't aligned for, for our purposes our operations aren't aligned um, our administrative structures we report to different people we do not have an overseeing body um, and funding funding right. was the separate disequal and um, and so there's a lot of things even though we're all under um, one college we have multiple names, um, so we all got together, and I think the fall of 2012, mm -hmm. our very first all ASC meeting, even though our ASCs have been in operation prior to that for at least a decade, in some cases. Um, so we decided we need to identify ways that we can align ourselves. We don't have a, a district body saying we want one college from you. We want to own one college, and what are the things that we can do to align and share? Because we're all duplicating the wheel at each campus. You know, you're doing this, you're doing this. You know, we have a, a lot more researchers together, we are mighty. Um, so that's what we mean by consistency conversations. Um, so when we talk about uh, many problems, many opportunities, we got together as a, a number of um, our full-time staff, our important, uh, reliable, you know, part-time staff, and we got together and we kind of made a huge list. What are the things that we need to, we didn't have a joint mission statement, not a website, to marketing, different names, as we said. Uh, we, before I took over, we were the Tutorial and Writing Center right. and yeah. Math Lab. We had a learning commons, a learning resource center, and ASC. And to dance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but essentially, you know, we we're all doing the work of student success in tutoring. Um, so we talk about many problems, but they're not problems, they're opportunities for us. Um, so that's what we really wanted to make that a positive thing. We're doing this as to build our own consistency, to own one college, to share resources, um, and to improve student success. So that's what we're talking about consistency. Oh, so now I understand. Okay, so this yeah. Actually, just to make another point, 
we have multiple campuses and we're all not doing it. We're not all doing the same thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Really a very good focus. The consistency? You're not so much in that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, but okay, what you're saying here. Because okay. we're doing something. Is this resonating? Then. Oh, I totally okay. really. We have just three campuses and it's we're doing the world, is, world apart. The world is okay. apart. Okay. Yeah, right now. yeah, we have five campuses, but only us has the tutoring and SI and we share okay. a little bit with the Davie campus okay. where we were yesterday but mm -hmm. Got it. everyone's their own sort of kingdom mm -hmm. and I don't even think they have tutoring stuff oh okay <laughs> And in 2012, we identified, we had a room of about 20 or 30 people, and I don't think we had ever all gotten together before. Well, we had, we, we had, were we were new. so that, that would have been impossible. Um, but we really identified a lot um, of areas that we thought that we could make consistent, but it was just the beginning, and we're still kind of going through and um, mm -hmm. picking up all of those pieces or all of those ideas that we brought in. So training is, is one of them that we're working we on. We are an ASC, all success centers. We have a website. We have joint marketing. We got um, marketing to demand, you know, the executive director to say you guys have to have one we, name. We and we're like, oh, help. marketing is saying it must be so. <laughs> we don't want to be the bad guys. Yeah. We're like, oh, the, if our deans aren't, well, we don't care what you're called. Just keep doing what you're doing. We need the strong arm of someone right. to put some top-down pressure. Hey, marketing, how, it's hard for you to do all this stuff. You know, we got, wouldn't it be easier for just one name? So they made some calls, and lo and behold, that's it, crazy. It came from that department. Yeah. It's, we, yeah, it, we're just about identifying stakeholders later. and partners. Who, no matter who it is, your allies. We kind of have levels yeah. of allies. You're drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, the handshake. You know. So we identified at that meeting, naming was really important. Um, a mission, we didn't really have a consistent mission. So I think we spent most of the meeting, you can imagine how long it takes to draft a mission with 30 people. And then we kind of workshopped it with the, the just uh, campus um, leads after that. Um, identified, because marketing was there, we prioritized a web page, <laughs> having a quick, because every campus had their own and a lot of them were dead. Self-managed, yeah, it's almost like a MySpace. With Oh, wow. Flipping text and those, this. Um, and so those were sort of the areas. I think based on um, based because marketing was there, we identified that we actually didn't even really talk about training mm -hmm. um, there. But in follow up meetings, um, I think as we were trying to parse down um, where we would start, uh, <laughs> the big no. <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we we always said is well, we would do that, but. You know, we have these two separate pieces, and well, we can't do that here, we can't do that here. We got a lot of no, 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 no. So we need identified, we still have a, a massive list of needs. But then we look at what we is possible, and that becomes your project. We call it our passion project. So we have a huge list of needs, and right now they're not all possible given various obstacles or things that we need to, to work uh, closely with. So we look for something we can own as a big yes. For us, it was training. You know, we knew that this was possible. We weren't going to have any anybody infringing. Um, this is something we all needed to create consistency, make sure students were the same quality. Because we would hear, well, at South Shore, they don't do it like that. At this campus, they don't do it like that. Um, so we wanted to really own uh, each other's successes and and our student concerns as well. And training helped us do that. Um, would you have one student that attends multiple campuses? Yes. They get, a student could attend two or three campuses in one day. Some of our campuses are quite far away, but I'm 20 minutes from our main campus, okay. another 15 or 20 minutes from her And I'm 10 campus. from the one south. Okay. So, you know, it's it's easy, and if they're in a particular program, they and students have preferences. Absolutely. So they'll say, I only do math here, and I only do this here, and I only, my program is here. Yes, yeah, yeah. They, they, they have their preferences, and they, so they bounce around a lot. <laughs> But we knew that this was something we could do immediately. There are a number of things. And I think what, I think one of, and we say in retrospect, we'll get to that in a minute, but one of the things that I took away, there's some things that right now for me were a big no. But when I have Ariel Gunn and she's got these contacts she's making, it's a not yet or it's a will be, and vice versa. So we realized that we have these other full-time people who have other connections they make and they've been here longer, or they know this faculty member, or they know this person in the right department, and we can use them as our ASE liaison towards that task or that, that need. And so maybe as for me, it might be a no, but if I have Dave on my side, we can make that a not yet because he can help facilitate bringing that person into our ASE ally circle. 
So, but having narrowed down makes everything a, a, a yes. Yeah, you have to develop partnerships where you Yeah, absolutely. Um, do we want to talk about why training was what we yeah. selected? Yeah. Okay, so we chose, tra well, one training is obviously really important. <laughs> so <laughs> it must be done. Um, Brandon and Igor, we, we were both kind of doing our own trainings. Other campuses have done training in the past. And then they were like, well, we haven't really hired anyone new for about three years, so we did it. And we're, so it wasn't, it just wasn't part of our culture, you know. So we wanted to make it a part of our culture. We wanted to stop reinventing the wheel because we were kind of passing trainings back and forth. Um, but we also knew that we probably couldn't get the other coordinators to shift what they were doing. Everyone's, we're, we're we kind of have a culture where everyone's happy with what they're doing. And we were trying to, we're, we're the new kids on the block, and we were trying to shake things up a little bit, but we can't come in and tell people to do it differently. You, as Nadia said, we were getting from other students pushback, resistance, that a tutor wasn't sitting with them for two hours, or you, they, you couldn't drop your paper off. And, and had to on was an hour sitting later. with you for two hours? Yeah. So, so those are different campuses yeah. had different cultures That's in their learning. Yes, yes. Yeah. they had to pop yes. around and yeah. make the changes. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, yeah. Campus. yeah, and it was very confusing and frustrating for students, and it was very hard on, I think, our, our, our individual staffs mm -hmm. um, when they had to explain why they were doing one thing but another mm -hmm. campus was doing another, and they didn't want to throw another campus under the bus mm -hmm. and say, well, but what are you learning? You know, you drop your paper off. So instead of trying to convince um, all our counterparts, counterparts, we thought, well, we'll push it from the bottom up, and then we'll train all our folks on the floor um, and then that and then eventually that culture would would change um, rather than having a conversation about why is it not a good idea to sit with a student for three hours or why is it not a good idea to drop a paper off uh, what we found is if you build it they will come so we have worked on building and we're going to explain the building process and how we uh, kind of we, we fought a lot but the best possible way we fought all the time surprisingly um, um, but if we, we built it, the other campuses sent their people. They were passively accepting. Um, so they sent, but now we are having more consistency conversations and they're taking lead. They're, they're having suggestions, they're putting themselves forward more, sending their people to us to participate. So we took the mantle, you have your work, your work group, build it, they will come, but it involves them. Their people are now involved. They have to be involved because they're representing their people. So we're kind of pulling from the ground to us and then the, the leads follow. Yeah. So one of the things that we did, if you take a look in our, um, is we started with um, a SWOT analysis. And we've done a, a formal SWOT analysis, and but mostly it was just a lot of conversations that were equivalent of a SWOT analysis. Has anyone ever done one? You kind of had a, you sort of knitted your eyebrows up. Yeah, but where are we? SWOT? <laughs> so on the, we, for ourselves, we named it our tutor training process workbook to keep ourselves on, on track. Um, so a SWOT analysis stands for um, strengths, um, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, we did one at our campus because our um, marketing, our business tutor, really wanted to do one because we were very new and we, you know, we were still kind of finding our way. And he said, "Why don't we do a SWOT analysis?" And he wanted to lead one. And I said, "Okay, that sounds really great." Yeah. Another example is that is in business courses, when students are business majors. The capstone is the final paper that a student does and they have to analyze a company and come up with an obstacle or a problem mm -hmm. and come up with a SWOT analysis on how to resolve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's say um, Quaker Oats, you know, whatever, whatever the company, you yeah, they would come up with. Mm -hmm. oh. I think I'm going to take a teach a second. One of the marketing classes actually turned the or ASC into a marketing semester long project. Who were their clients? Oh, really? They were their clients. And I'm like, oh, so if you had a business class that they were doing a SWAT, I'm like, well, I invite you to come do a SWAT in the ASC or your learning center. And that way, hey, and they're more objective. You know, they can really identify things a little more objectively than you can. And then sometimes you have multiple campuses, send them out into the multiple sites. And if you see SWATs are the separate or they're the same, the things that have the same things in common, there's a consistency conversation to be had. But I thought that was genius how you being a marketing client, they made a video, they critiqued the website. They created this follow us to success. This yes. was their idea of follow us to success. Make that connection between that student and the... Um, yeah. Were they a tutor? My, my business tutor, marketing tutor, said uh, every year they do, they take on a client. 
and it would be great if they took on us because he and I were kind of working together on marketing and I was just tearing my hair out trying to do a little bit of everything and um, they're um, they typically do like a big I think a, a, like coca-cola competition and it fell through that year so we were their backup totally fine we were there we were their backup and they were the students did an amazing job and they were actually yeah. really excited to have us and I made sure like that I sent everything it was the next semester that I finished everything right. but I sent it back and said look I took an idea from every group um, mm -hmm. we, we implemented something from every of, of one of their groups but it's also just a very small department and so they were they were looking for a good I think real-life client and um, you know they didn't worry about me not having time to come to class because I and they all came and interviewed me um, and I was available nobody had to leave anywhere so and so SWAT you can yes. really modify the questions so that they're more education specific <laughs> um, so it's not you know it, it's not just strictly I think for for a business model we were kind of joking that we're probably just walking SWATs all the time you know you don't actually have to do a formal SWAT to be doing a SWAT you're always thinking I think about you know, okay, what are we doing well? What aren't we doing well? What what's a what's a threat right now? Um, funding, <laughs> you know. Um, and I think yesterday, walking through all of the campus tours, it's constantly you're saying, "Oh, that's cool. That's a picture. That's an opportunity." You know, I do that. That's a strength. I'm not doing that. That's a weakness. Mm -hmm. So if, as you were walking through tours and you were or talking at the tables, you came up and you did probably didn't think about it, a million mini projects in your mind. That you could use to apply the model we're hopefully going to to bring to the table, and you'll get something out of. And we came in like a million mini projects um, that came just walking. Through. Oh, that is so at LA. Oh, oh, that's, oh, you know. So, so hopefully, um, you can identify some of those for our exercises today. So, the question is, what is your big yes? So you're looking at um, what you need in your center. What's something you've identified? Maybe walking through the center yesterday. We could really benefit from that. Or you went to a session today, we could really benefit from that data analysis. Um, and a possibility. So this is something we need. Is this something that is possible? That, we call it our passion project. That becomes a passion project that you can use with this model. For ours, the first one was tutor training. It was the biggest yes of all of them. We have a bunch of other ones that we're, we're pushing up the ladder. But what is your possible yes, your passion project that you want to develop? That's what I want you to answer that question. Oh. <laughs> if you need a minute to think of, like, yeah, articulate your SWAT, you have the space for it. It's a worksheet. Feel free. So I know I have a million passion projects. Assessment, data tracking. Space redesign, I want a studio. Space. space. That's what we need more than anything. Space a project around here. Um, they have such a wonderful facility and yeah, this is a very nice facility. Mm -hmm. I grew up in this area so I know how, the, how much foot traffic really rolls in. Mm -hmm. um, and then comparing that to where we are at FIU, where we are the fourth largest university in the nation, and mm -hmm. our, our center is, is not as big as, as what we need. It's not like, oh, it's just a prestige that we want to build it. No, we just, it's like a couple more rooms. Would be nice. It's a big need. Is it possible right now? I don't know. It's got to be the, the kind of marriage of both. It might be a not yet. It might. It might be a possible. That might be something you can propose. Build. We're talking about doing um, writing grant proposals. Um, I have to write grant proposals. Um, this system is on uh, the project management system that we're going to outline is huge in project proposal outline, and you have to do assessment and whatnot. So you can take that back to your grant and get a grant for space renovation. But you might also think about, um, as someone who also feels like, I wish I yes. don't have enough space, um, you know, identifying um, alternatives to a build out, <laughs> which would take um, years and to identify those funds. And, and you know, are you, are you a graduate student or undergrad? I'm a graduate student. Graduate student. Um, we should work mm -hmm. Maybe expanding your, your contact with students outside of the center, or maybe identifying like a, a secondary um, space. So you could have kind of like a pop-up writing center, maybe. So because that's what we've had to do. We're we're just out of space. I'm on an urban campus. We, we don't. So we're always trying to kind of identify possible places where we can kind of spill over. But also thinking about anytime a room becomes available, 
taking your flight case. Yeah, trying to, to yeah. get in there. So that could potentially be um, my facilities manager. He, he schedules all the computer labs on campus. And I'm like, you know, this one is really used in the reading and writing classes. I can schedule it for you. I schedule it, but all the in-between spaces are mine. So we have had to do computer science workshops in there. I have put psychology workshops in there. But that's the give and take. And I do a Google Calendar. It's all really quick. He does all paper copy and binders. So he's like, oh, you need you check 202, contact Nadia. And I'm like, yes, you can have it, but any other time, it's fine. So I, I get to control the calendar. That's the trade-off, the compromise. It doesn't have an AC tag on it, but we, we go sick or AC, fly in a couple times a semester when we need the space for larger workshops. So. What about you? Did you identify something maybe from the conference? Um, something that I want to change mm -hmm. or just something that you might like to bring back it can even it can be be small it doesn't have to be huge like a new building <laughs> well projects well, are generally quite small they well, build well, programs multiple projects together build a program well I don't know if it's a project but we were we were talking with um, someone at Miami day they, they do embedded to embedded to courses now, which means a tutor will go to certain mm -hmm. classes and sit there and yes. observe that's and an opportunity. participate. So that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I don't know if that's something that's swattable. Or I'm is. just saying, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's part so, of what you identify I mean, that's small. Okay, that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm thinking. Would you say you could you could identify a need? Oh definitely. Okay. Definitely. Is that also think would be possible? expand the yeah, it's a possibility. Um, it would expand the use of our facilities and it would spread the word throughout the campus that you know, these are things that we do. We, go, we do outreach to, to the, within the classes. So, do you have a big I think that's an opportunity. So maybe I can do I think that's yeah. perfect because then I heard about embedded tutoring too. And I was like, because I had a captain member ask me, I, I want to improve this and I want more help. You know, where the tutor goes in there, like, I can pilot embedded tutoring with you. No, you're so, a writing tutor. Yeah. Be, were you thinking about that in terms yeah, of writing? Yeah, I'm writing about writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I'm thinking of the writing, yeah. not okay. I, just, I work in the writing. Thing. Did you know that Nova does that? Well, um, well, there was, a, I think I heard that yesterday, and then another um, success coordinator, I think, um, and I, at Miami Dade and Heidi. Caitlin. Caitlin, yeah. She Caitlin was mentioning it. Did she do that for writing? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. She does it for writing. Yeah, I got her card to talk to her about the editor. So, yeah. Do you have identified a potential passion project that you could use with the, the workbook? I think so. Yeah. All right. So you have a project. Um, the next would be translating that into a goal. And they talk about it in business, they may talk about it in your strategic planning for your, your institution. Um, but SMART has to be a couple of other things it's on your worksheet, it's an acronym. Uh, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely, and time bound. So you would take that project. And you would say, hey, this is what my goal is, a singular goal by a specific time. Okay. I want to roll it out summer B, I want to roll it out fall 2015, right. or whatnot. So these go hand in hand. You have this and you have ours to kind of as a mirror and be possibly a guide. So ours was creating a comprehensive college-wide tutor training program that fulfills both NTA, National Tutor Organization, and CRLA, uh, criteria for certification, with multiple deliverable formats by end of summer or this summer. Are you doing we're doing pretty well. We've done the, um, we've, we've launched it. We've done mm -hmm. the training. So now we're ready to start on our application. Um, and we've created all the um, good old fashioned PowerPoints and identified our text. And so the multiple format, um, I, we hope we'll have time for over the summer to um, work with it to see our instructional technology department to, to put it online. So we're, after we went back and um, we'll talk about scope creep here in a second. We got um, we had some scope creep that got in our way a little bit. And we we took a, a, a webinar or a MOOC on project management, and they were talking about scope creep, which we thought sounded kind of cute. But um, it's when your project keeps growing and growing and growing, and that's what happened to ours midway through. We started identifying these other things that we thought we either needed to do first, or that other projects that were identified as important. So we, I totally went down the rabbit hole of um, yeah. wages. Um, our, our wages for incentivizing training by increasing wages. Mm -hmm. We want that completion. Mm -hmm. 
And then I started having tutors like leaving because I wasn't paying enough. So it was a very like, immediate need. So I went down that path. Um, and then class, and that opened up classification, that the classification isn't quite right. And then I started looking at all these other colleges. So this is why we're all involved in, I, I got all of us involved in the Scope Creek because mm -hmm. it, I guess that's my passion project. Forms <laughs> is my passion, I suppose. It's our forms. Yes. Um, and so we really had that, you know, the project suddenly started doubling and tripling. And we started taking on other projects before we had finished. Related. But we needed to finish this project first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we still hope to complete it by 2015 by moving all we've done asynchronous online. As much as you're like, well, wow, you have okay. to do some face to face. Can you? Look at best practices from another campus. Oh yeah, I was gonna yeah. say yeah. we just, we just finished, like in the past, yeah. yeah, past three four months we just got our final certification for CRLA. Congratulations! If you want to, I yes. have nothing to do with it. I can't take oh. credit. Ning and Ronald, they did it all. Um, but if you wanted to talk to Ning and Ronald mm -hmm. about it, um, I'm sure they because we got denied and then we had to redo something and then we had to change some things. So the process took a good year to two years to complete. Okay. Oh, that an, another project we'll have is our CRLA application. Yeah, that this is, is this is not this was just one part oh, of okay. this was the we needed to develop the content to get the to get the training going, and then our new project will be okay. CRLA certification. Well, but you have to actually content. do they want from you? That's what I'm asking. It's so, it's so oh well, we went to the CRLA website. It's right. very specific. Right. Um, no, we have a, a historical relationship with National Tutoring Association, mm -hmm. which isn't as well known. So. We uh, went to both websites, looked at the um, combined similar criteria, and we identified what are combined both. And to certified individual tutors, which sometimes they like to take that certification on the road, um, and then CRLA can certify as a center. And we want to do it institutional, not each center at each campus as a college. That's why we wanted to do this college wide. So NTA simultaneously, we we're doing a training program with NTA to become certified to train for that while we're doing. That's why we say both CRLA and NTA talk about school creep. Um, but we think the value will translate to the tutors to have that individual yeah. certification mm -hmm. that they feed, put on their resume. You know. Yeah, we don't well, have that. Our, our, our certification is considered post secondary, no, college level, um, international. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we can go anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so we have lots of other. Projects that we want to work on. Um, yeah, but yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay. All right. So I don't know if we'll have time to draft and share, but we wanted you to mm -hmm. kind of draft your goal statement and then share it. We drafted a new goal statement for a new project we have, but with each goal, if you look on our sample, mm -hmm. it comes with objectives towards that goal. Now you should ideally each project should have a singular goal in which each objective, once you complete it, works towards the completion of the larger goal. This is great. And this process really makes you, it forces you to, we, we realized we were building a program, you know, why we were getting so frustrated. And it, it seemed like we never could quite check anything off is that we, we were really creating good. and launching at the same time. Right. We were trying to just create it and launch, to create the project, to launch the program. We were trying to do project, project and program simultaneously. Scope creep. Scope creep. Um, creating partnerships. Uh, there's a kind of worksheet on the, the second page of your process workbook. Um, this is something that uh, we're definitely taking uh, to heart with our future projects. Um, you know, perception is nine tenths of reality, and if they don't know what you're doing or they perceive it differently, then the, the temperature of the faculty administration on students on campus um, isn't really reflective of the quality of work you're doing. So, in this little chart, um, for example, administrators. What are their priorities with your project? So for example, we had some deans who really were anxious about certification, really got ho about it, and some who were mandating it. Were yeah. mandating it, and some who didn't care. Sure, sounds good. Let me know how it goes. Um, so for them, their priority, okay, certification, their priority. I have another dean whose priority is persistence and student success. So how can I translate the training to his priority so that he supports it? Um, degree of influence, does this person have a, a large uh, degree of influence that can advocate for you or, or not. Degree of impact. Um, what kind of impact can they have on your project or your potential program? And then what role do they play? Are they a sponsor? Are they an advocate for it? Are they a stakeholder? Do they come to your meetings? Um, are they a recipient? The students are obviously a recipient. Um, I think in our case, the ideal person is someone with a 
um, a high degree of influence but low impact. They're willing to toot our horn but not get involved in our process. <laughs> So we're looking for those stakeholders that we can selectively invite to our process um, to give us the most amount of benefit out of that relationship. And we spend a lot of time at our meetings just with the five coordinators talking about how they might take um, justification back to their individual campus and how they would tailor it based on their um, deans or, or their staffers' mm -hmm. um, desires. And that's how we um, got down that road of um, incentivizing training because we had one campus that um, was very the staff was very resistant to having um, to participating in any training um, so we thought well we'll incentivize it and then we and, and I guess we thought that would be easier which is silly <laughs> to change like wages well, and, um, and also navigating you know we talked about sometimes you're in no and not yet um, some deans are, are, or some administrators are very okay with you with what you're doing, let you run independently, and some are, are not. So when we talk to our deans about this, we do it selectively. Um, I'm going to talk to my dean first because they they're going to give me the okay. You next, you next, and then we go to the last dean with all of the peer pressure behind them to get on board. That would be fun. So we are utilizing one another as a group to to help that last domino fall in our favor. Does it work? It's, it's, yeah. It's going to yeah. work better in about... Yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah it, it has worked because I think when one team says, oh yes, well, this is, this, of course we're going to do this, and then mine is like, oh, well, okay. Can you get this to us electronically? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So, okay. So why did you... Yeah, so, well, well, the workbook really continues, but this is what our kind of this is our baby. I think for every potential project that we vet, we are going to outline it start to finish using a project management approach, mm -hmm. um, but talk about our project articulation, how we're going to develop those partnerships. The the meat of your work is done in the WBS, the work breakdown structure. You guys are talking about training, you know, the nitty gritty. What do you select? How do you go through that process? And what we found is we did all of these pieces in all the wrong order. And we derailed and we delayed, um, but this helps guide our conversation to keep on track so that we're moving a, a bit more effectively through the process so we can be more responsive to our student needs. Um, so for example, you know, we spent a good six months debating book choice. You know, not six months, maybe three or four months. Oh no, it was six. Yeah. We're accurate. I, I read this book. This is the training book we need to use. Because we were pilots. Yeah. Um, we on the back of the on the very end of the workbook we put some um, resources. Not okay. we found an, um, an app um, that you can mm -hmm. So, but if you're trying to create consistency, mm -hmm. you all are there for the right reason. You're there because you want to improve student success, and you're going to do it using this vehicle or this method. But keeping that conversation on track or keeping the priority on track when you have that many people in a room can be difficult. So when you have a guiding document to, hey guys, we finished this, don't forget, this is what's next. Where are we with, this is tasks. These are individual things to be checked off, to check these off, to check these off, to move into the process. Um, so it just really keeps things organized and, and on point so that you can complete the project to, to your satisfaction and launch it as a program. And it helps with a large group, but also helped us because I think sure. Nadia and I were really surprised that we have very similar backgrounds. We both have um, master's degree in English. Mm -hmm. Then I was my background's more in writing centers. Nadia has a master's also in education. So we were really surprised that we disagreed on a lot because we just thought we would agree and we would be on the same page. So um, that that mm -hmm. that took some energy that we yeah. in, in time that we didn't imagine. So this breaking it back down to this and bringing the conversation on board. And we, we kind of were like, we don't have to debate, debate all of these things if we just remember our, our goals. Some of these you know, nuances will you know, work themselves out. Or we will just do some things differently. And that's OK. Yeah. As long as the core is the same. We decided on what should be the same and then maybe what might be a little bit different. So this helps is helping us sort of um, have that conversation with uh, of many stakeholders, but also just ourselves. And it keeps us um, accountable. Mm -hmm. You talk about it, if we have a specific t deadline to roll out, we need to keep track of how we're progressing through these tasks and objectives on a timeline. 
um, you're talking about uh, writing grants, you're talking about launching an embedded tutoring, you've got timelines you need to, to submit, you've got budgets that you're going to have to project for the, the cost of this. So if your work breakdown instructor says, okay, you need to do a, a, a you know, a budget projection, uh, if you're rolling out a grant, they might do it uh, over a course of three years, what's happening in the first year, the second year, what are you doing in each month, this structure can, can help you align those tasks to that grant funding priority or to that, that project proposal. Okay. Do you guys have any questions or no, anything you want us to send you? I, I have a suggestion though. Please. Um, I think the title of your presentation doesn't represent the breadth of what you really did. You know, I don't think a lot of people maybe understood the title. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really have great information. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I hope you took what you said. No, I really don't. No, I'm just saying. saying. Okay. Don't you know what I mean? But no, I, I, no, it's I, not. I, I mean, it's not like tutoring. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, 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 like tutor training, and many people thought that it wasn't tutoring. It was tutor training. Yeah. And if you wanted to talk about the process of tutor training, right. we can talk to our pool in the face. Right, but yeah. that's not what this was about. Yeah. About Bill Knight, what it was about. It was right. Yeah, they are. And honestly, I think when we first pitched it, it was more about tutor training right. in our right. minds. And then as we were putting the presentation together, yeah. we were like, this is not just, a, this isn't really about tutor training. It's really about our process. It's really yeah. about your process. Because we, we had a conversation it's about our process as we were putting really really it together. Yes. One of the, so. the first steps you do is you write your, your POS, yeah, which is the project really overview hard. statement. And easy. you do that early on. But what we used it for is when we finished the project, we looked back and we revised it. it was a live document. It became a really strong reflection piece for us. Yeah. Um, so I have a feeling because of this process, mm -hmm. we're going to be able to, to complete our projects quicker, more responsibly, more successfully. Um, and I'm really excited. I mean, this conference gave us the opportunity to articulate this so that we yeah. can be more successful. Yeah. No, sure. I think it all makes sense because mm -hmm. the consistency between all of your campuses and where you started and how you were progressing. I thought it was very interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you for coming. Very good. Yeah. I hope the team will be there. And we've